take number two live on twitch welcome everyone i'm going to show you how to do hotkeys the way i do hotkeys and what i change what i'm doing mostly i'm using the standard aoe4 uh, hotkeys uh, i'm going to talk about that i'm going to talk about where i hotkey my army where i hotkey my buildings and how does that change on the map when i'm moving around the units and i'm going to use paint to draw this because there's some specific or weird or unique stuff that um, I use so I kind of figured the best way to do it is through paint otherwise I don't know how to explain it so let's start with the basics I'm gonna go through from one to zero hotkeys and where I keybind stuff so in feudal I do on one I do archers and the reason I do that is because selecting one and pressing a for a move is the easiest for me or to you know target fire units or whatever so in Feudal Age, when I play, no matter what Civ I play, Archers are always on 1. And then on 2, I will have, um, you know, a Spearman or Horseman or whatever else. And then 3, I'll use uh, Rams usually. So, so this is my standard layout for Feudal, no matter what Civ I play. And again, I use Archers on 1 because it's the easiest for me to target fire stuff. Um, and, you know, number 1 is the easiest to select and, and use. Uh, on four, no matter what age, is always uh, town center. Five is barracks. Six is archery ranges. Uh, seven is siege workshop. Eight is stables. And then nine, zero, nothing. Uh, so there's some changes here that I like to make. For example, if I have only barracks and stables, I will put stables on 6, and then when I add ranges, I will change ranges to 6, stables to 7, and then when I add Siege Workshop, I'll change stables to 8, and then this is my, you know, normal perfect layout. I also hotkey monasteries the moment I make them, because you usually never have Siege Workshops and Monastery built at the same time. So usually when I build monasteries to, to make, um, you know, monks to pick up relics and stuff, I usually hotkey it to seven. And once I pick the relics, I change Siege Workshop to seven. I know this is a little bit complicated, but that's kind of how it works. I don't hotkey market and I don't hotkey blacksmith. Just so you guys know, I would suggest you to do it because I do think it's good. I'm just not used to it and I'm not using it. I'm going to go more into the one, two, three specifically. Uh, the buildings are kind of something that doesn't really change. I don't hotkey my mills or I don't use any hotkeys. There are in-game hotkeys where you can select um, like resource economy buildings. I don't use them. Now, regarding what special hotkeys I use in the game, like I said, I use the standard layout that's in AoE 4 and I haven't actually changed much. The only special hotkeys that I've changed or used are F1 is select idle villager, control F1 is select all idle villager, and this comes from uh, StarCraft 2 because that's how it is used in StarCraft 2. And then next to one, this little key right here, left from uh, one, is select all idle army. So I don't use select all army key, I used only select all idle army. So if you have, for example, if you're attacking your opponent and your army is hotkeyed on number one, if you attack your opponent and you want to use select all army and move your army somewhere else, it will move the initial army as well. And the reason why I like using select all idle army over it is because it allows me to not mess up my main army or the armies that are already doing something. And it's instead only going to select the army units that are like AFK, they're not doing anything. So if you have units that are lost somewhere in space, that's the best way to select them. Now, like you see, this is in Feudal. This is how I do stuff in Feudal. Castle, I'm going to just replace it with Castle. So in Castle, there are different things you need to hotkey. So number one thing that's super, super important to have hotkeys are springs, bombards. Um, well, springs on, on this hot. So I have springles on number three because it allows me to, you know, be able to micro them properly, select them and snipe enemy siege. On number two, I'm talking like castle to imperial, like late game stages kind of thing. Uh, this is for uh, mangonels. And the reason why I think it's extremely important to have mangonels on different hotkey is because you can quickly select them if you see clump of units and just destroy the uh, opponents. Just kind of pick up the army without having the siege slow down your army. So one thing you don't want to do is put your main army, whether it's infantry or cavalry, with your siege. 
I don't know if you guys know, but in Age of Empires 4, if you would to clump up all your units together, Siege, Cavalry, Infantry, all the units would move at the speed of Siege. So it would move very, very slow. And this is why you don't want Siege hotkey with your Infantry and your Cavalry, because it will slow down your army quite a lot. Same thing if you have Cavalry and Infantry. Cavalry will not move as fast as it should, because it will move at the speed of infantry so this is something to be, to be very careful of depending if what kind of unit comp you have to not mess up and kind of slow down your army for no reason and then my main army is a number one uh which is just like spears uh, men at arms and whatever archers crossbows uh this is part of the game where you're not going to you know necessarily micro crossbows while you have all the siege and kite and stuff so you can kind of just a move your main army and then you focus micro on springles and mangonels let's say i have no mangoes but i just have uh a springles in this army i'll put my cavalry uh on number two and i'll use cavalry to run by and you know do whatever i need to do if i'm playing super defensive like i'm not trying to fight my opponent maybe I have a keep and he's engaging into me what I like to do is still have my springs on three. I'll put cavalry on two and I'll do a massive run by and then I'll just add mangonels with this army because I am not moving around with this army, right? It's staying defensive so the speed of the army doesn't matter. And then if I need to target something, I'll just double click mangonels and attack whatever I need. So I change this depending on which age I'm in, uh, depending on the situation, just depending how the game goes. Like sometimes if I'm aggressive, uh, maybe I don't have mangonels. Maybe I just have pure spring. I'll bombard. I'll put bombards here on number two so I can select bombards to the buildings, springles to the siege. But if I have a full, full army, I'm talking like bombards, springles, mangonels, then mangoes go here and then bombards and springles will go together. So that's kind of how I do it. I know it's a, it's a little bit complicated, but this is what I don't really think about when I play the game. This is what uh, makes sense to me, you know, in my in my brain and how to do it and it's The way I uh, gotten used to playing so that's how I go about it. Anyway um, I'm gonna delete this and move on to the next part This is as far as my hotkeys and this is pretty pretty much the same with every sieve that I play there's another thing where regarding multitasking and this is like another layer of the way I do stuff differently so try to try to follow I'll try to explain this the best of my ability, okay? So, let's say I'm the red player. Um, this hotkey setup that I explained, the buildings are all the same. The army is when we have like massive engage, like engagements basically like, like an army versus army, right? They're fighting, that's my hotkey setup. Now, not all games are like that. And a lot of the games, you know, tend to be like one engagement here, one engagement here, one there, one here, right? So I'm going to explain how I do my army hotkeys because I change them all the time. And a question I get on my stream all the time is why do I hotkey my Khan 1, 2, 3? Why do I hotkey my units 1, 2, 3 and then 1, 2 and then, you know, sometimes they're 2, 3 and so on and so forth. Um, let's say I play Mongols and let's say my Khan is running this way. My Khan will be hotkeyed 1, 2 and 3. But if I take a villager to build a tower here, let's say, I will hotkey the villager two and three. The reason for that is my Khan will still be hotkey number one, so I'm not losing Khan at all. But if my villager gets harassed, I can quickly go to it, right, without clicking on the map. And I can quickly check if he's doing well, if he's getting harassed, so I can move it back and so on and so forth. Now, how do I know that Khan is one in this situation when I'm in the game? So that's another part that I'm about to explain. I have a, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's unique, maybe someone else is playing like this, but when I play north to south in Age of Empires 4, and I did the same in StarCraft 2, the way I see it, I split the map in my mind like this. This is one, this is two, this is three. What does this mean? If there's any army on this side of the map, I will hotkey at one. Any army that's on this side is two, any army that's on this side is three. So this is why when I move out, I hotkey my stuff one, two, and three. So for example, let's say I move with one army here. I will hotkey it one, two, and three. If I send another army to the right side, I'm gonna hotkey this army. If it has a chance to move towards the middle of this side, I will hotkey it two and three, thus removing hotkey from the initial army, and it will only be one. 
So in my mind, I don't, I don't, you know, mess mess up with my fingers because I'm like, oh, which army is where? Because I know that the left side of the map is one, so I always instinctively click one for the left side army, and then if this army, let's say, moves towards the middle, my brain will instantly be clicking two for that army. And then what it, that enables me to do is send another army and hotkey it as three, and I will instantly know where each of the armies is. So this is how I change, this is how I do the harassment, and I change my hotkeys all the time. And something, if you ever watch my stream or videos, if you watch my games, you will see this happening throughout the game. I'm constantly changing hotkeys. If my army is here and let's say it's three, it's going here and this army is going there, I will actually change their hotkeys from three to two and this army will go from two to three. So that way I'm not lost where is which army. Like for example, if I get a notification I'm getting attacked on the middle, I don't need to be like, oh my god, which hotkey it is. I know that it's number two because number two goes in the middle. Now, simplified version is this, right? Like I said, one, two, three, but it more so works like, kind of like this, I would say, uh, where north, west side is, let's say, one, middle side is two, and then east south is three so that's kind of how it works and if you split it like this this is kind of what you get right so obviously this depends if you have different spawns like if you spawned i don't know someone asked me like what do you do if you spawn here and your opponent spawn here i do it the same way in my mind one is here two is here three is here so that's how it goes right but this is the this this is how it works, right? If the units move this way, there's still one. If the units move here, there's still two. If the units move here, there's still two. If three moves here, it actually becomes one. If it moves here, it's still three. And if one moves here, it's three. Why? Because left is one, two is middle, three is right. Does that make sense? <laughs> so this is how my army hotkey changes, but also if we have this situation, right? And then one moves here, three moves here, they remain the same, right? Two remains two in the middle. Um, so it's all about perspective from where you're playing. Usually left top side will be one, unless it goes like this, then this is three, this is two, this is one. So. Yeah, this is something, like I said, a lot of people ask me, why do I triple hotkey my units? That's why, because in my mind, when they move through certain zones, I can release the hotkey that is wrong. So what I mean by that is if the unit moves through the middle, right? And let's say it's one, two, and three, I don't know where I'm gonna go necessarily with it, right? Because maybe the opponent's army is going this way. Maybe the opponent's army is going this way. So if the opponent's army is heading up, right? This is going to redirect upwards to fight the army. So I can send another army on the bottom. And that will be two, three. And this is going to be one. Any questions? <laughs> uh, what do you do if you need more than one key for an army? Well, like I said... This is like a situation where there's a lot of multitasking and there's different sides of the map, right? If I have the main army, so let's say, um, for example, if one of my armies is here, uh, defensive army is here and, and run by armies here. So let's say this is like Khan, this is cavalry and this is uh, crossbows. If I gather them all in the middle, right, Khan will go into group with crossbows and cavalry will remain its own group. That, that's how my army hotkey works. Uh, so this is why, like I said, when you watch my games, you'll see me change hotkeys a lot. And a lot of people I feel like are not frustrated, but they're like, why the fuck is he changing hotkeys all the time? That's why I'm changing it. And I very rarely lose the sight of my units to the point where I don't know where I sent it. Because sometimes I see people when they play, they panic and they scroll through the units, like trying to find their control group. 
but I don't have that issue because, like I said, if I get an attack on the middle, I know which unit is in the middle. It's two. So, yeah. Um, if, you know, if I need extra hotkeys, like, for example, maybe there's four armies, right? Uh, let's say there's, I don't know, let's say there's four armies. Um, let's say there's Siege right here, right? There's an army here, an army here. So let's say the opponent is pushing straight towards the middle. What I would do is I would combine one, two into number one. So that would be my main army. Four would turn into siege army and three would turn into two for cavalry for run by. So then I would have my man at arms, spearmen, crossbows, whatever else in number one. I would have my spring guns in number three, main guns with one and then um, cavalry would turn into two, so I would use three hotkeys still. I wouldn't change uh, TC hotkey, you know, I wouldn't remove TC as a hotkey to use four control groups. I always, always use three control groups for, for, for the army. So, uh, that's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to mention, but I think that's pretty much it. I, another thing that people ask me is why do I hotkey my TC on start with all the keys? So this is something you might have also noticed um, when I have uh, a TC like this, I hotkey, it, it goes something like this, it goes something like this, right? That goes and start like that above my TC uh, and then my like scout or con would be one, two, three. There's no, <laughs> the truth is there's no specific reason for it, I just like um, my TC being hotkeyed 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 0 on start, uh, that's it. Because I like using all my hotkeys from the get-go. I don't like just hotkeying uh, 4 on TC and nothing else. Um, and that's pretty much it. It also reduces the chance of you fat fingering and like instead of 4 clicking 3 because you have so much more hotkeyed to it. Same thing like if I build a barracks, barracks will be 5. But if I build an archery range, I'll put archery range on six and seven. That's pretty much it. Why not hotkey all production buildings to the to same key? Uh, because I think it's very uh, APM inefficient to be scrolling through buildings to you know build the unit that you like, right? If I were to hotkey barracks, archery ranges, stables, and siege on one key, right? I would press five, and then I would have to tab three times to get to siege and I can just click seven on my hotkey and get siege workshop straight away. Not to mention if you're playing at like 300 APM plus you're like click five and then you're tabbing and then you tab one time too many and then you got a retab. It's just not it's just not effective in my opinion. Uh, once again I do think that blacksmith and market is good to hotkey. I personally don't which is probably bad. I didn't hotkey engineering base and armories in Starcraft 2 either, and I always thought that's something I could have improved. Another hotkey that I used that I started using recently. So let's say this is your uh, TC, and let's say that this is, uh, these are little sheep, right? And they're all alive. And then there's this sheep that's dead and this sheep that it's dead. So let's assume that these sheep are, there's 12 villagers on them, okay? So what you're going to see very often is 12 villagers will kind of go around. They're going to try to get an angle to get into the sheep to start gathering. And then when those two sheep are completely out of meat, they will go to the next one. And then all 12 villagers will kind of bug around and try to gather from the same sheep. And your food gathering efficiency will not be very high. So what I like to do is every once in a while. And again, if you pay attention, you'll see me do this in stream. You can use a hotkey control F. So this is a hotkey that exists in AOE 4. You don't need to set it up yourself. And what it does is, is it selects one food villager. And this is very good for early game. So if you control F, it will select one of the 12 villagers. And then I will do control F, right click this sheep, control F to select another villager, right click this sheep, control F, select, the, click uh, on this sheep, control F, yada, yada. So what I will do in like a matter of two seconds, I will select five different villagers and tell them to go kill the next sheep. So what this will do is uh, two things. First thing is 
I don't know if you guys know, but when there are no sheep that are currently on the, you know, turned into carcass, all the villagers will do that animation to kill the sheep and then have like two second delay and then start gathering. But if you kill all the sheep yourself, then the gathering will be instantaneous and the villagers won't stay around as long to be like, oh, do I have space to gather or not? That they will instantly move to the new sheep. Yeah, there's a small tip for you there as well. That's it. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. I currently don't have any plans to change any of the hotkeys in the new patch that is coming. Maybe I'll use some new hotkeys. I don't know. I'll try to update you guys. But uh, if you guys did enjoy, if you're watching on YouTube, if you did enjoy this video, let me know. If you have any questions regarding my hotkeys, uh, feel free to ask. And if you want me to make any other kind of educational video, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.